Listen. Can you hear that? That sound? Celebrating the new day? Once filled all my waking moments. That song heralding the end of a long night, sung to the open air to where the sound would stretch out, and gently fall to earth like the downward spiral of a sycamore wing. The spring saw my tree feathers unfurl, and summer bore throughout the forest a rich store of fruit and berries for the seed thief to plunder and enrich its song. I was moved in my surroundings, a part of everything that grew. I was blessed by the sunlight that reached out, touching the forest floor with a quiet ecstasy. And in such moments, I would remember what the ancestors had said. Once, when the trees of Holmwood were at rest inside the forest, a light appeared above them in the air. It penetrated deep below the canopy and hooked itself to their roots, alighting in a clearing. A presence rippled in the undergrowth and the trees struggled to comprehend it. This light is surely our salvation, the mighty oak then said. We should yield. So they did. The light space remained, and the presence passed over and out of the mystery that couldn't contain it. I managed to survive the great storm, and in times of short water learned to conserve my energy. But when a dark cloud came to rest above my crown, the birds took flight. Then a searing pain struck me like winter. I felt the surrounding meadow lean in and press the air heavily. I could smell the earth. I felt the void where my roots had clung to the soil. A wide gap in the sky had opened and was funneling blackened air. I shuddered and bore my silver leaf underside to invoke the rain. When I awoke I felt a warmth and a breeze, a breathing from one who held me in his hand. He had a knife and with it he was whittling, carving quietly. And as I began to take shape I began to resemble the one who carved. Heavy was he in thought as if the trunk of the mighty oak itself lay across his shoulders. Was that why in me he carved the image of himself with eyes closed? And the more he carved, the more he began talking to me. And I heard words like, friend. And since he understood my longing to return to the wood, he gave me back my two outstretched branches with their five slender twigs. And I began to hope that the birds would come back to nest in my arms. But for a long time I was held in a long-lasting night. I was pale, I was cold, I was shivering. Then I heard noises, but nothing of the like that I'd heard in the forest. And gradually they became louder, until suddenly I was overwhelmed by a great gust of wind, like that of the night of the great storm. I tried to let my branches be carried along, but I saw that my limbs had been fastened with great thorns. I was surrounded, surrounded by a plague of shouting and jeering in a language I did not understand. They hoisted me up above their heads, and a light blinded. I was spun around, disorientated. I wanted to cry out, but without the leaves I had no voice. And had I cried out, who would have understood my voice? I felt at that moment a visitation of all the evil of the world beyond the forest. And beyond that, instead of trees, people 
a crowd surging and swelling like the great river. They looked at me, they looked into this face that the one who carved had given me, and they tried to find themselves reflected in this face, and leaning forward they outstretched their arms like branches to touch me and to force upon me their vision. But it was not a vision of my world. It was a vision of such horror, of fire and flames. I could see their suffering, their jealousy, their vanity. I saw how they cheated and deceived one another, corrupted anything that was treasured. Yet through that pain they sought to find in me salvation. And then they began pleading with me, and I heard words like, Father, and then I saw myself in that vision, and they told me that I was the source of all wisdom and knowledge. And I began to lament how we had become estranged. I wanted to cry out, You people have brought this all upon yourselves. I wanted to tell them, Look into your own heart. It cannot be made of stone. And then, as if far off, rising above the cacophony, the song of the seed thief returned. But this time it wasn't just the one voice, but many. And the many voices were singing together. And they were singing together as if they were singing as one.